every other true Christ has to come because of Jesus. Because the disciples asked him, what would be the signs of the end of the world and the end of time in Matthew 24? And Jesus said one of the first things. He said, they shall what? Arise false Christ. He didn't say only one. <laughs> Amen. But he said, there shall arise false Christ, which is more than one. So if the devil could have more than one Christ, if he could have more than one anointing, if he could have more than one anointed person, do you think God only is going to have one anointed person? Hallelujah. I believe God, and I'm going to show you in the Bible, that there's coming a day in our life. There's coming a time. There's coming a season in our life that is the day of Christ. Not the day of the Lord or the day of judgment or the day of the wrath of God, but the day of Christ. To the book of Matthew, chapter 16. And from verse, verse number 13. Matthew chapter, chapter 16 from verse 13. It says, when Jesus came onto the coast of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? And he said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said on, unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Verse 20, I want you to be aware of that. Then charged he, his disciples, that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Jesus told his disciples <laughs> that they should tell no man that he, Jesus, was Jesus the Christ. It was not yet time. For them to go about and tell the people that he was the Christ. That all the prophets had prophesied about. And all, you know, the, the great man of God had seen that should come to redeem the earth and to save the world and to redeem man back to God. But he said, after Peter said that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, he said, flesh and blood have not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. He said, because you have, you've received this revelation, I'm going to build a church on you by this revelation. And he said, I'm going to take you to heaven, Peter. And whatever you bind on earth is going to be bound. No, he didn't say you have to go to heaven. Hallelujah. He said, while you ride here upon the face of this earth, whatever you bind on earth is going to be bound where? In heaven. And whatever you bound on earth, in heaven is going to be bound enough, and whatever you loose is going to be loose, so which means to tell me that you don't have to die and go to heaven for you to influence heaven. You don't have to die and, you know, like some people believe in reincarnation and all that kind of stuff, but I believe in the resurrection. You don't have to die and resurrect to come back to influence heaven. But right now, hallelujah, glory to God, you could have an effect in heaven. You could have an effect on the face of the earth. So if you knew, and you know most of us, when God tells us something about ourselves, we excited, we eager, we stirred up. You know, we go to church and we say, you know, God told me I'm a prophet. And we begin to prophesy. 
and people don't believe us and then we backslide or we get mad at the church. We get mad at somebody's, you know, ministry. We get mad. We, you know, get upset. Why? Because somebody didn't receive us for what we say we were. You know, some people say the apostles, the evangelists or missionary, whatever gift they say that God gave them and, you know, but hey, you know, Jesus said, don't tell anybody that I'm the Christ. Hallelujah. Because there was coming a day that he would declare who he is. Sometimes we get ahead of God. Sometimes we get, you know, not that God has not anointed us or given us gifts and bless us, but we get excited, we get motivated, we get inspired, and we run out and we make mistakes and then we get hurt and we get disappointed and we get discouraged. God might have given us a dream or given us a revelation or given us, you know, an assignment or something to do, but because we spoke too soon or because we stepped out too soon, because, you know, we got ahead of the pastor that God had put over our lives or, or the minister or the church that God has put us in, and the person didn't understand, and, you know, they still bless us and gave us the grace of God. You know, we just all got fouled up. But that person was still praying for you. Or your mother was still praying for you. Or your father, your grandmother, or whoever that person is. So Jesus said, don't get ahead of yourself. I don't need the world to know who I am yet. Hallelujah. You know, some people that gamble, and I don't play the lottery or anything like that, but people that win big sums of money. They want to remain unknown. But, you know, you have to tell. The world's got to know who win the money. And then the world know where you are. And then they begin looking for you. Hallelujah. So when you get anointed and you have a gift of God inside of you and you begin to open your small mouth and you begin to say you're anointed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> the devil begin to look for you. Spirits begin to look for you. Hallelujah. Trials begin to look for you. Tests begin to look for you. You say, God, why did you do this to me? Oh, yes, God, God might nurture you, but if you look back, you say, just because I opened my mouth. You realize after Jesus got anointed? Let's go to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 4. And from verse 14. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 4 and from verse 14. The Bible said, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he sought and he taught in the synagogue. Being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found a place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He have sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fasted on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Hallelujah. 